Okay, I'll let you guys read through it real quick about some facts about the Ferris wheel. You guys will see some numbers just like we did yesterday. Can you identify what those numbers mean? All right. So it's a long little story here about the Ferris wheel. All right, so here I'm just going to start going around the room today. Uh, I see the first number I see is five up there. It's because it says five feet above the ground. Uh, Lucas, we're going to start over on this side of the room. What's that five represent in this problem? That's my minimum is five. Nice job. All right, Megan, it also tells me 130. What's that 130? That's my max. Yep, 130. And then if we keep reading here, Isabella, it says one full rotation takes about eight minutes. So what's that eight minutes? The period. And maybe it's only me, but this must be one big Ferris wheel. Eight minutes to take a full, a lot of stopping maybe. That's a long time. All right, sorry. I'm just trying to bring some real life into it. It won't happen again, God forbid. <laughs> All right, I, uh, I don't want to graph it first. You guys know how I roll. I like to see the equation first, and I know you do as well. So let's find A, B, and C right now before I graph it. All right, Matt, we'll go to you. Formula to find the A value. Okay, so it would be 130 minus 5, all divided by 2. So let me know when you find what the A value is. Sixty-two point five is my A value. Yep. And hey, 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 I'm gonna let you know in a couple minutes why that's incorrect. But we'll leave it there for now. Okay, I'll show you why it's incorrect in a second. Not your fault. C value. Maybe you guys can start thinking about it while we're doing the rest. Why that's incorrect. C value. Alex, what's the formula I gave you for C value? Yep. Divided by two. So when you're ready, let me know what the shift is, the midline. 67 and a half. And I just want to address this right now. Somebody in third period asked, hey, is that right that the shift is bigger than the amplitude? And that's fine. Remember, you can the shift is just how much up and down we're going. We can shift however many units we want. All right, so that's fine that it's bigger than the A value. And then finally, I got the B value, which is my frequency. Brooke, what's the frequency always associated with? The period. We already found out what's the period. Eight. So I'm going to take eight. Set it equal to what there, Brooke? Two pi over that B value, whatever it happens to be. No pun intended. Cross multiply. <coughs> Whenever you're ready there, Patrick, let me know what the B value is. Pi over 4, yep. <laughs> Everyone all good? Finding A, B, and C? All right, I just want to see the equation now. So Y equals, let's see, A was 62 and a half, and we'll discuss in a second why that's not right. Cosine, because it's a cosine curve, it tells me. B value, pi over 4. <laughs> And I'm just going with what the problem says. It does say T, not X. So I'm going to put a T there plus my C value, 67 and a half. Okay. Any issues? That's basically what we did yesterday. All right. So what I need you guys to do right now for me, take about two minutes. Please set up your X and Y axes. Do not plot any points, though. That's where the hiccup occurs. Do not plot any points, but please set up your X axis and your Y axis appropriately right now. All right, I'm hoping we're at this point. All right, we've been doing this for a couple days now, setting up the X and the Y. So go ahead, take a second, set up your X and Y. Talk with, bless you, talk Zoom. Yeah, sure. Sorry about that, but here's your curve, everyone that's watching at home. Yeah. All right, sorry about that. You guys that I just called on, sorry, I don't get any uh, internet pub, but we already got a internet sensation here. 
OK. You guys have any questions about the curve? Why we're flipping it, more importantly? Do you see why we're flipping it? Because we're getting on at the lowest point. All right, here we go. This is what I was trying to do before, is try to pull up a picture of a buoy. Anybody? Do we need to pull up a picture of a buoy, like the pendulum? I won't even. Sure, here you go. Water. I don't, what the heck does the top of a buoy look like? I, what does the top of a buoy look like? I have no idea. Oh, there you go. All right, it's bobbing up and down. No top. All right. There's different kinds, right? Like I don't know. I'm not even gonna. All right. So there we go. Uh, all right. This one's gonna be a little trickier too. So go ahead, read through it. Read through it, and then we'll talk. Because there's a couple uh, numbers up there. All right, let me start with you guys here. Well, first of all, let's take care of that 12 seconds. What's that going to be? Period. OK, so we can answer part C. What's the period? 12? 12 seconds. All right. Where's this buoy start? Which is what? Three feet above sea level, right? Three feet. That's where it starts, and it bobs up and down a total of Six feet, okay? So keep that in the back of your mind. So the first question I'm asking you, because I don't provide it, is what type, what type of curve should I use? So I use a sine or a cosine curve. And that's why I asked you guys, where does it start? Where does this buoy start again? Not at zero. It starts at three, right? So what curve do you think I should use if it starts at three and not at zero? Cosine curve, yep. So we're going to use a cosine curve. And any time, please stop me, especially on this one, because this one can get real confusing. All right, what's the amplitude? Well, you already have a formula for amplitude, which is max minus min divided by 2, right? There's your amplitude formula. You guys already know what the max is. What's the max in this one? From the top of a wave, 3 feet above sea level, right? But we don't give you the min. We don't see how far it goes. Now, somebody in period three made a great suggestion. Well, if it goes up to three, it's got to go down to negative three. All right, great suggestion, but here's the problem when you do that. If it goes from three down to negative three, that's a distance of what? Everyone agree? It's a distance of six feet. And then I got to go back up to three. So there's six feet. There's six feet. How far did the buoy travel? 12, but we were only told it went to only traveled six feet. So it can't go to negative three because I need to travel six feet total. So it's at three feet right now. So where's it got to travel for a minimum? So when I finish, it's going to end up at six feet. Don't yell anything out, please. So how far does it got to go down and then back up again so I get six feet total? So what's that minimum going to be? Because I want here, I'm starting at here. I, don't put anything on your graph. I'm starting at three, right? And down and back up. This whole thing's got to be six feet. And you know I start at three. So if I got to go six feet total, what's got to be that minimum then? So I go the same on both sides. It's got to be zero, right? Because right, if, I, if I end up at a minimum of zero, ready? How far did that go? How many feet, guys? Three and another what to go back up? Three. So my minimum is going to be zero. So three minus zero divided by two. What's my amplitude? 1.5. All right. So let's write the equation now. Uh, here we go. We're not fully done. Y equals, here we go, Emily, what was my amplitude? 
That's what I put first. What curve did we say it was going to be? So 1.5 cosine. I still need to find what here, Reagan? What goes in here? B value. I haven't found that. But you know the P is 12. So go ahead right now, and then I'll uh, call on somebody else. You know P is 12. Find the frequency, the B value. Leave the pi in your answer. Got it, Reagan? Pi over 6. And what variable are we using here? T. Okay, so I'll keep T. And then we also have to check for A. What goes at the end of these equations usually? Some type of shift, right? How do I find if there's a shift or not? What's the formula? C equals? Okay, so 3 plus 0 divided by 2. It looks like there is a shift. Of 1.5, yep. Okay, I am going to let you guys now graph it all by yourself. You already know what the period is, so you know you should know what to break up your x-axis in. All right, you know it goes from 0 to 3 on the y-axis. Go ahead, graph it. You got a cosine curve. Okay, everybody good? with what the graph looks like, starts at its max of 3, goes to the midline, 1.5, minimum, midline, max. All right. Any issues with the graph before we answer part E? Okay, use the equation, which we wrote in part D, estimate the height of the buoy at t equals 27 seconds. All right, so here we go. t is for 20, we're going to take 27 and plug it in for? Plug it in for? t, yep. Y equals 1.5 cosine pi over 6 times 27 plus 1.5. Where can I find the value of this? Some of you are already going to it right away. We can get out the calculators, yes. But hey, remember, I don't know what you're in right now. We're doing a cosine. We're involving cosine and a sine curve. We should be in what mode right now? Radian mode. Yep, make sure you're in radian mode. Go right ahead. Or if you want, store 27 in for x and write the equation that way too. There's another way. Either way. We're coming out with 1.5, yep. Uh, hey, I do like, the especially you guys here, because I know I got a pretty strong group in this period. How could you, no calculator allowed, how could I have found the answer using the graph? I know the graph doesn't go up to 27, right? So how the heck could I still use the graph, though? What's going to happen with this graph after I end here? It's going to start what again? Repeating, right? So 12, and then we're back. If I'm going by threes, right, this will be 24. If I do another cycle, everyone agrees. So at 27, it would be back at 1.5. Okay? So it keeps repeating itself. So if I kept going, adding 3, adding 3, adding 3, 3, 3, 3, 27 would be right here. And it'd be at 1.5. Questions? I know you're excited. So am I. All right. We got this one tough one left. Uh, and not to scare you, I'm just going to let you know before we do the problem, this came off an old region, same type that we're taking in January. All right, so here we go. Read through it. A little voltage of households.
Okay. Uh, unfortunately, I always have you guys try to eliminate something that you know it can't be, but unfortunately, what's the amplitude of all four choices? A buck 20, so I can't get rid of based on the amplitude. All right. What is the difference of all four? What value is different in all four? Name that value that's different in all four. The frequency. Everyone agrees the B value is different in all four. And I know from this unit, frequency is always associated with the what? If you know the period, you can find the frequency. So what we need to do is, based on this whole 60 cycles every second, we got to figure out what the heck the period is, because it's not 60. So what I need you guys to do is dig deep, go back in your packet if you need to. Not the formula, but what does period mean? What does period mean? Me too. That's how long it takes for what? How long it takes for one cycle, right? How long it takes for one. Well, what do we know? We know how long it takes for 60, cripe, 60. But I need to know how long it takes for one. So I know one second, right? One second, that's 60 cycles. Can you guys come up with any way to figure out one cycle, if I could spell it correctly? One second, 60 cycles. Well, how many seconds is it going to take for just one of them? Well, why don't we do this? Ready? One second for 60 cycles, right? One second, 60 cycles. How many seconds for one cycle? All right, so again, one second for 60 cycles. How many seconds for one cycle? I'll set up a little proportion. What can we do with that proportion? All right, let's cross multiply. Ready? 60 times x equals? 60 times x equals? I'm not trying to fool you. One. <coughs> Divide both sides by 60. It's going to take 1 60th of a second. All right, I know, I know this gets a little, but see what I did there. One second, 60 cycles. So how many seconds in one cycle I cross multiplied? It's going to be 1 60th. So there's your what value? This is, what did we just find? What's the 1 over 60? No, that's not the frequency. It's the period. So now let's use it to find the B value. So 1 over 60 period equals, what do I put over on the right side now? 2 pi over... B. This is an easy cross multiply now because B is going to equal 1B equals 120 pi. There it is. There's your B value. So I'm looking at choice four. That's what we're in for for January at least. Whew. Let's go. Let's go. I want right till 1231 right now. All right. Working on either this assignment, review problems. I don't care. All right. Let's get to it, please. Let's get to it. Right till 1231. Don't pack up early on me.